Hi, I'm Rabbi Baruch Levy, Rabbi B. Welcome to Soul Centered. Soul Centered is a newly forming center for loss, meaning, and healing. We're based here in Denver, Colorado, but we are virtual and live around the world. I'm also the creator of Spark Seekers. That is the program at Soul Centered under loss, guiding people through um, loss and grief. Spark Seekers is a book that I wrote a few years back, Spark Seekers Morning with Meaning, Living with Light. And the foundation of my coaching practice and the Spark Seekers Grief Experience, a mini retreat. One of the tools that I use in guiding people um, who are Spark Seekers through, through the morning process, whether it's in private counseling or it's at the retreat, is what I call Creative Kaddish. And I'm offering this to you, complimentary, because I think it's a power, I know it's a powerful tool. It's based on and built on the ancient ritual called Kaddish, which is a prayer that Jews have been reciting over their loved ones at the time of death and onwards for thousands of years. The challenge is, is that most Jews don't understand what they're saying if they recite it at all, and why keep it reserved for Jewish people? I believe in taking the great isms and extracting best practice and offering them to the world, and, and Judaism does grief very well. So let's take these and universalize and modernize and personalize and spiritualize, and that's what Creative Kaddish is, and that's what I'm offering to you. What's beautiful about Kaddish, it's a prayer not about death, it's a prayer about life and light and love, and, and isn't that what a legacy is about? I call them the four L's. Life, light, love, and legacy. That's what this prayer could be and should be. And so in Creative Kaddish, I walk you through how to create your own Kaddish. Don't need to speak Hebrew. It technically was an Aramaic. You just need to be able to write from the heart because that's what this is. So what I've done is, first of all, I've created instructions for you. Um, you can download them, follow the links in this video, and it walks you through everything I'm saying now. So if I speak fast, and I know I speak fast, you can return to the written document. At the center of this is a text. This is based on a page of Talmud. This is what a page of Talmud sort of looks like. And the text here is a prayer, a blessing, an intention that I created on behalf of my Father Shelley Perlman, of blessed memory, who died years back. And around it are spots or boxes for you, the one I've created for you is, is a blank template, to write in insights, anecdotes, feelings, memories. I chose to do it at a 12-month journey, which is the traditional mourning process after the death of a loved one, and each month adding in a funny memory or just uh, something inspirational, something I wanted to continue on in my father's, a, a quote, a not so funny joke, which he was known for like most dads. And so it's a way for, for me, for you, to reorient ourselves away from the darkness or through the darkness and the grief and the loss. Because the truth is, is our loved ones don't die. Their body does die. And there's nothing we can do about that. A teacher of mine once told me a person dies two deaths, once when their body dies and once when their story dies. There's nothing we can do about bodily death. However, we have a lot of say over what is remain, what remains and what lives. First of all, I believe deeply in the soul and the spirit, another conversation for another day. But if even if you don't, our loved one's life was a story. That story is not dead. In fact, it's alive, it's well, if we become the guardians of the story, we can defy death. We must defy death by becoming the guardians, I call it carrying the fire, carrying the fire, the message, the essence of who they were, who they are, and who they will always be. But it's not enough just to think it or feel it. We gotta record these things so we can archive them and pass them down from generation to generation. I will give this to my children. It's a beautiful testament of my dad, my love for my dad, and who this man, Shelley Perlman, was to me. They didn't know him, but they will know him in no small measure due to this. But even more than just the writing of this, it's an opportunity for me to formally commit to doing something, to remembering. Memory is a powerful thing. It doesn't just happen. We have to become active participants in remembering and keeping our loved one's memory alive. This is as much for you as it is for them. I want to be the type of person that does remember, that does become a guardian of those who came before me. I want to, I want to write these beautiful words of light and, and life and love, and I want to commit to it every single day for a year. And at the end of it, I want this beautiful testament to that love to put up on the wall, but more importantly, I want to know. 
that I've done everything in my power to become a guardian of their story. And it helps us. It helps reorient us on the path of life. And frankly, it helps those who come after us because our loved ones who are living will someday be grieving over us. That's the way it is. They're watching us. How we grieve, they grieve, and how we live, they live. This is an opportunity for the deceased, for your loved one, for yourself, and for those who will follow in your footsteps to carry the fire and to illuminate a darkened world. Creative Kaddish, I know, will bring you meaning and purpose and inspiration. It is my gift to you. If there is anything I can ever do for you, regarding grief or this journey through loss or anything, please reach out to me at mysoulcenter.org or rabbi at rabbib.com. Until then, namaste, shalom, salam, peace.